On May 14th of 2023, the second tallest volcano in North America, known as Popocatepetl in Mexico, began producing a dramatic spike in eruptive intensity. Whereas beforehand, 1 to 28 intermittent explosions would occur every week, with this rate staying mostly constant since the volcano reactivated in 1994, the number of explosions increased in frequency, size, and in what is highly unusual for this volcano, created sustained nearly 500 meter or 1640 foot high lava fountains that are more typical of a usually less explosive stratovolcano such as Mount Etna. By May 19th, this intensity spiked again, causing so-called volcanian explosions to throw bombs of lava more than 850 meters beyond Popocatepetl's summit crater, which then tumbled downslope as lava avalanches for up to another 1,500 meters. This activity produced significant volumes of ash, causing 4 millimeters thick of material to fall as far away as 45 kilometers from its summit. I personally estimate that during the last three days alone, Popocatepetl has ejected 17.4 million cubic meters of ash and tephra, meaning its current eruption would rate on the 0 to 9 volcanic explosivity index as a 3. All of this ash has resulted in the temporary closure of two major airports as ash is incredibly potentially damaging for aircraft engines, while in addition caused schools to close for tens of thousands of students on both Thursday and Monday. Because of the dramatically increased intensity of this eruption, on May 21st, 2023, Popocatepetl's alert level was raised a tier on the local alert level system, now being a single tier below what would, in my opinion, almost certainly trigger some evacuations. This has triggered an influx of news reports claiming that millions of people are at risk or that millions of people might need to be evacuated. However, at least at the time of the writing of this video, those are gross exaggerations in my opinion that assume a worst case scenario. And yes, millions of people are at risk at the present if you are counting the number of people that will be annoyed to remove ash from their building roofs and sidewalks. With this being said, there is currently a 12 km exclusion zone around Popocatepetl's summit. To best explain my analysis of the situation, you need to first understand the local volcano alert level system used by Senapred. This volcano alert level system has seven tiers, with two being green, three being in yellow, and two being in red. Green marks when the volcano is not erupting, yellow marks when it is erupting, and red marks a major eruption which requires an evacuation. Each tier has more than one phase which subdivide it in intensity, with a higher numbered phase indicating a potentially more dangerous situation. Popocatepetl is currently at an alert level of yellow, phase 3, which has only happened at the volcano four other times in the last 20 years, marking the latest eruption as sort of a once in a five year event. The reason for this increase in sulfur dioxide emissions and ash emissions can be found by simply the color of ash which fell. Thus, I present ash which fell from Popocatepetl on May 20th on the right alongside ash which fell from it on May 21st on the left. The black represents highly unusual basalt, hence the darker color, while the gray ash represents andesite which is the typical erupted composition lava at Popocatepetl. This suggests that a pre-existing basalt lava dome which had likely been built in the last week exploded on May 20th. This dome likely formed due to a moderate volume injection of basalt magma from the deep crust, hence the creation of tall lava fountains and higher than typical gas emissions. Once the lava dome was mostly destroyed, more viscous andesite lava erupted, meaning that the next few days to weeks might see larger explosions than witnessed in the past week occur. Yet, there is a legitimate concern at Popocatepetl. It appears that lava domes are being repeatedly generated and destroyed over the past few days. There could reach a point where so much material builds in Popocatepetl's central crater that a plug forms, eventually leading to a powerful eruption that, if it were to occur, would almost certainly produce pyroclastic flows which would travel several kilometers. A somewhat similar situation occurred in December of 2000, resulting in an 8 kilometer long pyroclastic flow. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.